So if I'm going to be the entry fragger for the team, I need you guys to learn nades. And mostly when I say nades, I mean flashes, because our nade grenade usage as a team is pretty shitty, and we find ourselves lo dying with full nades. And uh, when you die with all your sh with all your inventory or with all your utility still in your hands, it's it's ridiculous. You're you're, you're dropping smokes, flashes, nades, and molotovs to the enemy team, and you're not using shit that you bought. It's like you're just a huge waste of money. But uh, if you haven't already, you need to bind your nades to keys on your keyboard or uh, keys on your mouse, whichever one. I have mine as flash for Z, molly for X, grenade for Z for C, and smoke for V. So it's flash, molly, nade, smoke. I can I can cycle between them really easily, and this is important because say I want to throw like a smoke, and then I want to throw a flash, say I want to throw a stair smoke, right? Or, yeah, fine, say I want to throw a stair smoke, I'm going to throw a smoke, smoke. and then I want to switch to my flash, and I throw flashes. Well, you can't do that. You can't do that if you have to use a scroll wheel, if you have to scroll through your needs. Like, if you want to throw, like, if you want to throw two flashes, you can just hit the quick switch, quick switch button. Uh... I don't remember how to do it. Flashbang. You have to like hit. You have to hit your quick switch key really quick, really fast twice. But if you want to throw one nade and then you want to throw a different nade, like say you want to throw like a flash, and then you want to throw a Molotov, you can't do that without having your uh, having your nades bound directly. It seems kind of seems kind of basic, but and it usually needs to be nades that you can get to really quickly, like so that you can have muscle memory. Like I I just have them as ZXCV just because like. My hands are already on the WASD shift and spacebar keys, so it's like they're right there, so I don't have to move my hands too far in order to in order to throw them, but but I mean there's gonna be if I'm gonna be entry fragger, I'm gonna be the first guy in first, I'm gonna throw all my shit before I'm going in, so like if we're gonna do like an A exec, I'm gonna throw my smoke, whichever one it is. But I'm gonna do that. But let's see I'm gonna throw like, I don't know, uh uh, yard smoke. smoke. Then I'm gonna throw both my flashes, flashbang. and then I'm gonna take a pick, take up a Molotov. Like if I'm coming A, I'm gonna do that. And then a Molotov sandwich, and then I'm gonna then a Molotov sandwich. And I'm gonna look for that. Like I'm gonna hug hug this corner Molotov sandwich, look for a guy in there. Then I'm gonna get close to this wall, and I'm gonna ask you guys to flash over the fucking wall. And then it's, and then like we need to coordinate and say how many smokes, how many flashes we're gonna throw so that I don't get flashed. And I mean, you guys are gonna throw all your shit. Like we're gonna throw all the smokes together there, and then you guys are gonna start throwing flashes. And on the last flash, I'm gonna come out. Like as the last flash is popping, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna fucking start looking at shit. And I mean, the first thing I'm gonna come out, the first thing my my attention is focused to, like I need to clear shit methodically. And you need, like as an entry fragger, I'm gonna have to kill the guys that are actually out in the fucking open because they're gonna be like blinded by all the flashes coming over. So it's like I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look. Obviously, I'm gonna have sandwich clear because I'm gonna molotov top of it, and I'm gonna look at stairs. Stairs, nobody there. Look close right or close left. Uh, close left. CD spawn. Uh, well, try box. CD spawn. This box, jump on here, look at the balcony, look at ninja spot, have one of my teammates Molotov under balcony, clear under balcony. You know? And then like once everything's cleared, then you know they're in smokes. So then like ideally I like you guys shouldn't throw all your flashes over the wall. You should like keep some. Because then once we get the bomb planted and say I want to go and kill somebody, like say say there's there's shit that smoked, then I want to go kill somebody that's in the smoke. I'm gonna come and get close, like say there's a smoke here, right? And I want to go, and I know there's somebody in there, and I want to go kill somebody who's in the smoke. I want to ask one of my teammates to flash, to flash spawn. I don't know, like I'm that. It's not that hard. This guy's gonna be in the smoke, so he's not gonna see this flash until it's in his fucking face. So then I'm gonna ask somebody to flash for me. I'm gonna get close to the smoke. I'm gonna say, "Hey, can you flash spawn?" And they're gonna be like flashing. And then as soon as it pops, I'm gonna pop in and I'm fucking kill this guy, wherever he is. And if there's nobody here, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here. There's nobody here that I'm have control of this, and then I'm just gonna sit here. And this is gonna be my post plant position. It's really that simple. And this, 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 like pop flashes aren't hard to learn, especially like flashes through smoke. Like they're all gonna be just improvised. Like the same shit goes for like say there's a, there's a jungle smoke. smoke. I'm gonna ask somebody, hey, can you flash jungle? Flash jungle like this. Again, they they, they don't see it. That one's kind of deep though. Maybe like that. Or like whatever. If there's somebody's in, if somebody's in the smoke. Like they're not gonna see. They're not gonna see the flash coming at them anyway. So it's not like they're gonna be able to turn from it. It's like if there's somebody in there who's posted on the smoke, waiting for the smoke to fade, then they're just gonna get raped. 
I'm just gonna be close to the wall, and then I'm gonna they're gonna they're gonna say flashing, and then I'm gonna pop out and I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. Like it's really that easy. That's all I have to do, and it's like I might. Not, so that's what it means. Why? That's what people say. Like if you're a pro, say, oh, I uh, uh, I, I did a dry entry or something like that, or uh, I, I had a clean entry. It means that there was nobody on site, and the the CTs were playing like in in retake spots where they can get smoked out. And so they wait for the smokes, and then they save all their utility, and they try to, uh, they save all their nades, like, the CTs will, like, sit in, like, easy choke points to get smoked off, and they'll let you have the bomb site, and then they'll save all their smokes and their molotovs and flashes and stuff to come retake the bomb site, which is really important, which is why it's really important to get this entry frag on one of the guys in the smokes if you haven't gotten one yet, because, uh, you can, like, you strip the team of a bunch of utility, and you pick up, you know, something for you to use for yourself. Because uh, me as an entry fragger, I'm going to have used all my shit before, by the time that I died. Uh, same goes for like, like these setups are really the same shit. But like, say we're say we're trying to take mid, right? <coughs> and we do our normal take, you know, the top mid smoke, and then some guy some guy flashes out mid for somebody, flashes out mid for the opera to peek, and then you know we get we get behind this box, and then somebody smokes, and somebody smokes window, and then some guy's over here, and he smokes. Uh, let's see, if I remember how to do the smoke. And uh, he smokes connector. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're doing our mid take, and that connector smoke's kind of dick, but you get the point. You know, we're we're doing our mid take, and so say like I can either smoke connector and we can go mid to A, or I can smoke this smoke cat and go mid to B. But say we're going mid to B, right? That's gonna be ideally that's gonna be completely smoked, so no one's gonna be able to shoot me from there. So I'm gonna get close, and I'm asking my teammate, "Hey, can you flash cat?" And it's it's an easy pop flash. You just do that. You know, I mean, anybody on cats obviously is just gonna get destroyed by this pop flash. They see like they don't see nearly enough of it to turn from it. So I'm just gonna get close to the wall. They're gonna pop flash me, and then I'm gonna pop out and I'm gonna kill this guy. Same thing goes for like connector. We we do the same shit, but instead of smoking a uh, connector, we smoke window and smoke cat. So no smokes pop. I get close to connector, and then I ask somebody, "Can I flash connector?" And you flash connector. It's just gonna be some easy pop flash like this. Again, simple, simple pop flash. They don't hear it, and they see like hard, hardly enough of it. So just anybody playing in connector gets raped by this pop flash. Even somebody playing like, okay, somebody playing in this corner isn't gonna get get hit by it. But if I'm entry fragging, I'm probably probably gonna throw a Molotov in the corner anyway. Like, I don't know. Uh, maybe like this. Burn. Probably got Molly the corner. How do I get that Molly to go perfectly? Let me see. Burn. Yeah, that was good. That's a good Molly to know. But it's like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna ask for the flash, and while the flash is being thrown, I'm gonna throw this Molly, and then I'm gonna get in here, I'm gonna clear connector, and then these guys are gonna be blind, and then we're gonna, you know, if we're splitting A, then that's gonna be smoked, that's gonna be smoked, and we're just gonna come in and clear everything. That's what an entry fragger does. That's what an entry fragger should be doing. Like uh, th these so-called entry fraggers on Reddit aren't real fucking entry fraggers, or at least they don't know how to. They don't know what the fuck they're doing there. They're doing shit like we say, like we say we're gonna flash for them. I don't know where the fuck I am. I don't know how to over it. But like, say there's a smoke like right here. I'm throwing smoke. I know we say we're gonna flash for them, and they're like, okay, go ahead and flash for me, and they're gonna be right here. And it's like. They're, they're not going to be fucking close enough to capitalize off of the flash. It, it, you have to be so close to where they're... You have to be ready to peak the moment the flash pops. The exact moment the flash pops. Because otherwise, you're just going to give the f person who's blind a chance to run away and hide. And the flash is for nothing. Like, you got to capitalize off of flashes like that. You can't be this fucking far away when there's a flash coming jungle. It's, it's ridiculous. Because, like, when your teammates are flashing for you, it's like, damn, those sick b-hops. But if your teammates are flashing for you... And they're giving you the sick pop flash through a smoke. Like, they're gonna be blind. It's gonna be the freest kill ever. I don't understand why people are people are scared. Literally, the only way you die is if they just ram and start spraying and they hit and they get you while they're blind. But otherwise, it's like the freest kill ever. I mean, I don't know. Entry fraggers. People call themselves entry fraggers, but they play like fucking pussies and they bait the team. And it's really annoying. Cause it's like they, their job is literally to just go in and get a, get a kill if you can. And if not, then you die and someone trades, and then that's it. But it's not a position I would prefer to play, 
just because of the fact that I like I like lurking solely for the fact that I get to play off of game sense. Entry fragging, you're not really playing off of game sense. You're basically just playing off of you're playing off of good communication with your teams in terms of asking for flashes, aim, reaction time, and uh, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, entry fraggers usually DM a lot and they have a they have relatively high sensitivity. It's not not really important though. It just depends on how fast you can move your crosshair. But it's like whether my sense is uh, 2 or 20, I can still do this with my mouse. It's not... I'm not going to do it any faster or any more accurately by using higher sensitivity. Like, to be honest, if I had higher sensitivity, I probably wouldn't be able to do this as accurately as I, as I can. You know, like, arm movements or hand movements are a lot more accurate than just wrist movements at the end of the day. But... But that brings me on to my next point of if I'm going to be doing this, I want you fuckers can't be pussies either. If we're going into a site, I need someone like I'm going to be here waiting for the flash, but I need I need the next person to be right fucking here. Like I need someone to be coming in right behind me. Obviously not so much that we line up, because but in the in a way that I'm going to be clearing the site, they're going to be clearing some other site, and if I die, then they're going to trade that fucking kill. Like if you don't trade the kill and you die too, then you fucked up. That's not my fault that you don't trade the kill. Like. That's that, that's literally all on you, and you not being close enough to me to to trade the kill, and you're not, or or I didn't communicate where the guy has, the guy was at, but that's hardly ever gonna happen. I mean, if I if for some reason I die and don't know where they're at, then fine, but I I need my team to come with me, because I mean, if I if, if we throw all this shit and then I go in and my teammates don't follow me, then I die, and then it's just a five v four for no reason. The whole point of me doing this, and the whole point of us me entering, is so that so that you guys can trade off the kill and open up the site. Like, at max, there's going to be two or three people in the site versus five five people on our fucking team, and there probably be a one lurker that's not going in with us. But the rest of the team is the rest of the team is going to be supporting my entry in some way or another. Whether it's whether they're kind of passively supporting me by opting for some long angle, or they're just coming in with us. Like, ideally, you're going to have one guy coming in as the entry fragger and you're gonna have two support players behind them and you're gonna have an opera and some other choke point covering them so I mean that's the idea when, when I say learn pop flashes it's not really so much like memorizing spots I mean for some it is because you have to you know make sure that your flashes pop but I mean if you just go into if you just go into offline mode like I am here and you just you know do your practice config you know where you, where you make the time 60 minutes you make yourself have infinite ammo uh, you spawn yourself with all the grenades, and you just like, and you turn on um, the c this command sv underscore grenade underscore trajectory one. It turns on the little, it turns on the green line that you see when I throw when I throw flashes. So you can know exactly where the flash pops, and you can know whether it's gonna flash somebody or not. I mean, if it's in someone's field of vision, chances are it's going to flash them. Like, the only time a flash won't get someone like. A flash's range is kind of weird, but if it's right over their head, it doesn't flash them very much. If it's like, you know, like that, it gets them a little more, you know, like that, okay, it gets them a little more, and then, you know, like that, they're going to get wrecked. And how far away you are from the flash, it depends on how white you get. Uh, but, so, a flash's range is usually... If it's in your field of vision, you're going to get raped. And if it's a little bit outside of your field of vision, you're going to get still a little flash, but less raped. And if it's really far away from you, then even if it's in your full field of vision, you probably won't get completely full white, but you'll you'll lose a little bit of reaction time. Like That's another thing that flash does, is it kind of slows down what's going on in front of you. So if somebody peeks while you're flashed, it might not feel like you're super flashed, but it'll be enough to where your reaction time will be slowed down and you'll die. That's, that's kind of what happens when, when operas flash each other. Like when people flash, each other. like that's kind of the point of this flash right here when we're, when we're doing our mid take. Like, Throwing a flashback. it's not gonna it, it, it's not gonna rape somebody who's rape an opera who's playing here, but it's gonna get them enough to the point where everything's gonna get slowed down, and then our opera is gonna come out, and he's gonna you know be able to peek him and kill him because he has the advantage of reaction time. And most of the time, even if an opera gets a little bit blinded, they're gonna come behind. They're gonna hide behind the wall anyway. They're just gonna give up the position. <clears throat> but I mean, say we're doing a B take. See, this is this is exactly why I don't really like taking Beyond Mirage, and like straight up from apps is because there's no there's no easy pop flash. 
uh, for yourself like there is in no cases. I mean, this is an okay flash, and that's an okay flash, and that's an okay flash, but like, there, there's no like, there's no awesome pop flash like there is for a certain zone. Like, there's no awesome pop flash for B side like there is a pop flash, easy pop flash for Cat or anything like that, or like there would be for A side when you're throwing shit over the, over the over the roof. Like when you're throwing shit over this roof, throwing a flashback. Uh, it's a little more. You gotta throw it deeper than that, obviously. So it's like, and you're not gonna be able to peek with peek flashback. with it soon after it's thrown. And you know, as you can see, these flashes aren't the greatest. Like that one will be in this guy's field of vision, and most guys like this. But it's not gonna be so much so they're gonna get you know raped by like the other pop flashes for pop flash or cat or pop flash for CD spawn or something like that. So taking B is like entry frag on B sucks, and usually the entry fragger fucking dies just because it's not like. Not only is there so many places to check, but there's no pop flash that's going to pop flash everybody. So you got to throw a lot more flashes. And it's hard to do that because how tight the choke point is, and you're all trying to throw a flash at the same fucking place. But, I mean, if I'm trying to... If I'm trying to take this, uh... You know, probably... It would be something like... Uh... I don't remember how that, flat, how that smoke goes. Smoke. But maybe that's the right smoke. It'll probably be something like throw a smoke like that, Molotov that, you know, flash myself out with my teammates flashing for me. That was a bad flash, but flash myself out just and just go, you know. At least I deleted this angle, so I, I deleted one angle. So if I stay close enough to this wall, this guy from Cat won't be able to kill me. So I can just like, I can just do all that and then jump out the window and try and uh, you, you only you only have to clear three things: is uh, van, bench, cat are the three most main places. And I guess market, but that's mostly mostly going to be where the rotators are. That's not really good. people aren't going to play B side from market. That seems kind of that seems really passive, a little too passive. And I guess someone boost, boosted on this box if you know if they're feeling cheeky like that. But I don't know. B is just hard to take. And it, it it really sucks to entry frag on, and it, it sucks. And also like getting trade frags is difficult because again tight choke point. People are going to be you're going to have to line up if you want to get trade frags, or someone's going to have to split up with you. Like you're going to have to jump out the window, and this guy's going to have to come out the balcony. So it's not an it's not an easy job, but uh, but once post plant situations are happening, like say, like say you planted for cat, and uh, say you planted for cat, and say you like smoked this, planted for cat and smoke cat, but you still hear somebody something coming cat, right? Say it's like a two v three situation where we have two we have the bomb planted and they have three counter terrorists. This is normally when it, when there's going to be a scenario where I'm going to ask for like. Where we're gonna want to do something like pop flash through smoke, like uh, let me throw a smoke again. Smoke. Or I'm gonna ask for a pop flash like that. Or uh, even just something a little closer like that. I'm throwing a flashback. Because um, again, that's a great pop flash. Like. Uh, general rule of thumb: When someone's smoked out, they're not going to see the flash initially being thrown because the smoke's going to block the arc of it, so they're just going to get raped by this. But we're going to want to do something like that because we need to even the numbers. If we give them a chance, if we just hide in our normal places and we give them the chance to try and retake the site two v three, it's going to be in their their advantage just because they have the man advantage and they they have the ability to throw someone at throw one guy at us, scout to find out where where he is, have someone trade that kill, then it's two v one and then it's, it's miserable. So you have to do something. You have to do something aggressive like. Like you know, pop flash through a smoke, uh, to you know, e equal to you know, even up the numbers, and then you can go back to playing like, like once you do this, then it's an easy, then you're in a good post plant situation too, so you can just stay on cat and you can kind of set up a crossfire with someone who's hiding in this corner or someone that's hiding van or something like that. Um, but. You know, people usually talk about entry fragging, and they say, "Well, entry fragging is mostly a terrorist side thing." A terrorist side role, and on counter terrorists, you kind of just play normally. I mean, it depends, you know. There is some aggressive things you can actually do on counter terrorist side that can give you like a pseudo entry frag on counter terrorist side, and you make it five v four. 
uh, where a couple of ones that come to mind on Mirage say like I have a good mid spawn with my teammate. Both of us can uh, we can go for a really quick like normally I'm the B player on cat but instead of going B I can come with the mid player we can both come say we have a pretty decent spawn so we can both jump out this window hug this wall to come up mid and then have one of our teammates at A flash over the wall like flash over flash behind us uh, that's a little too uh Flashback. Is that one good? I think, I think that one's good. Yeah. Have one of our teammates flash over from A, flash mid from A, and then we peek with the flash, and we can kill like anyone coming top, anyone trying to cross top mid and get behind the boxes. You can just you can catch like an opera blind peeking this, and this, this is a really easy way to make it five before like. It, it seems kind of risky because you're jumping out the window, but the reality is if you have a good mid-spawn, you'll be able to get, like, right here. And as long as you're coordinated with the A guy to where he's going to throw a flash reasonably early, you're not really at any sort of risk of dying. Like, you'll, you'll jump out the window, like, if you have a decent spawn, you'll be able to jump out the window before this guy... These guys are going to be out mid, so... You'll be able to safely... Once you're out the window... Once you're out the window, you don't really have to worry about dying as long as you jump out and they get close because they can't see you you know if, if, if I'm like an opera and I'm right here I can't see these guys coming up and so as long as you're not running you're not making a whole bunch of noise and it, say you just get here and you start walking and you wait for the flash and then you just you know and then you like you just start walking get up here and then your teammate A flashes for you and you come out there's not it's not really a risky play you know you you, you have a potential to a lot of fucking people depending on how many people how many times how many people they send mid like if they send two three people mid you're just gonna fucking destroy them but even if you're just coming up and you're just killing the opper, it, it, it's you're wrecking them. You're, you're taking so much. You're taking mid back from them before they've even taken it, and you just put a huge thorn in all of their all of their plans. Because once you do this, uh, generally once you do this, you want to like fall back. Like like luminosity does this a lot, where they where they throw like smokes, and then they and then they run through them, and then they f or they they throw smokes and they flash through them. Like they throw like. Uh, I don't. I don't really know how they do it. I, I saw them do it on Mirage once, where they like smoked something like this, and then did that play that I was talking about, where they got close mid and they kind of, but they got really close to the smoke before asking for before their teammate flashed them, and they came around the smoke. The smoke wasn't here; it was just that smoke. And they came around the smoke, and they just killed like uh, I think they killed two people top mid, and they ran away, and they just went back to, back through connector. And they kind of just set up again. And they made it 5v3. It was like it completely won the round. It completely wins a gun round. And plays like these can really... Uh, so if you want to just randomly get aggressive... Like this is the type of shit you really have to do. Uh, especially when it gets to like a pro level. Because they know all the common CT setups. You know, the the 2-1-2s, the 1-2-2s. You know, they know all those. And they know how to like... They know how to counter those. And they know exactly how to throw smokes and flashes and molotovs to flush people out of common camping spots. So if you want to have like a really effective CT side, especially on a CT side of map, you can you want to try and go for that random piece of aggression, take the entry frag, to get the five v four, and then you can play CT side as normally as you want because there's they'll likely you'll have killed one of them and you'll have taken so much utility away from them, especially like even a smoke that uh, they're not going to have enough. Even if they know exactly where you're playing, they're not going to be able to take a site effectively as long as you play uh, good CT side uh, positions. But there's plenty of easy setups like this. Same thing goes for like, uh, say I want to say I want to play and say I want to get close. Hey, you can have a teammate cut get close. A ramp with like, uh, th this this is especially good with a P90 or uh, something that, or, or like a really fast shooting weapon, a fast spraying weapon. But uh, an AK works too, where you just get close. Like you smoke ramp, you, know, you smoke this, and you have a teammate get close. Like here, I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about here, like really fucking close to the smoke, and you wait for them to start throwing shit. You have them start. You ask for teammates when they like to, you know, feed you the info when they start throwing smokes and Molotov and shit, and then you just pop flash that smoke.
while the smoke's still up, obviously. You just pop flash that smoke, and then this guy just peeks in and just fucking rapes all of them. Like, you obviously don't want to go too deep for it, but you want to just get close enough to where, you know, you wait for them to be close enough to where you peek out, and you kill at least one of them. Like, if you kill one of them, this is, 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 a, is a huge success, but if you kill more than one of them, it's a free it's a free round, but you just peek out, you kill one, and then you run the fuck away, and you just go play a regular position. Like, like you kill one, and then you go in a balcony, or you kill one, and you go sandwich, or you kill one, and you go behind the boxes, or something. But it's obviously important to fall back after this. You don't want to do this get one kill and then push in and go for more kills because then you're just making it 4v4 and if you're playing the site with only one other person if you're playing a, you know, a site with two people then this guy is going to be all then whoever threw the flash for you if you push and you die then this guy's going to be all alone against an A take bad not not good like if you if you get the kill and fall back then you're playing the same CT setup that you were before you know a smoke and a flash down but you're it's a smoke you're going to throw anyway that's not going to flash down, but you have the man advantage. So it's really important to not push that and give them the free trade. You want to fall back. But uh, once again, the setup goes for <laughs> really any choke point. It Obviously it depends, but say... And it takes a little bit of practice, but say I want to get this guy, get the, get him close. Palace, like say I have a good palace spawn. Say I have a good palace spawn, you know. Say, say I spawn like uh, right here, and I decide I want to go palace. And I have another teammate going, you know, I come. I come around, I do the fancy little jump on the box, I come here, I come here, I get close palace. And then I have a teammate, you know, right here. I don't really know exactly how this pot flash works, probably just like that. Did that get deep enough? Yeah, there you go. Then I have a teammate, I get close here, my face has to be in the wall so I don't get flashed. And then I have a teammate pot flash palace, and I peek in and I kill the fucking offer palace. Uh, like, there's so many ways for you to do this stuff on CT side. And that's really how you take advantage of the map being CT sided, and how you how you get how you just steal frags from the enemy team, and that's really what it means to be like a coordinated CT side. Is just it, life is so much easier. You don't have to have good aim when when you're just shooting at blind enemies. It's it, it it's so it's they're just such easy frags. But there's just the amount of possibilities for this are limitless. Like uh, say we're holding B. And you know, I have a teammate who's say I have a teammate who's playing, you know, close here. And I'm playing Balkan and I'm playing cat. I can do the same shit. I can throw a flash. This one's a little bit harder, but say I'm playing like back. Throwing a flashback. Yeah, that one went too deep. This one's a little bit harder. Because it's it's like a tighter place to throw flashback. it in, but Yeah, that one that one didn't go far enough. I'm throwing a flashback. Uh, this one takes this one takes a bit of practice, but yeah, I don't know. It's probably easier to just throw it like this. I'm throwing a flashback. Yeah, that one, that one was good. Just throw a flash like that. Like this one, they're gonna they're kind of gonna have a chance to to turn away from, but uh, this guy can like this guy can wait. And peek a little bit before the flash pops. You know, peek as the flash is coming. And it, it, the timing here is kind of strict, but there, there's a way you can do it where they'll they'll be where you peek, and they're either going to be blind or they're going to be turning from the flash, and you'll kill them, f kill them in the back. Again, it, it, it's kind of difficult. Like this, this one's a little bit a little bit harder than the other ones, just because of the fact that you have to bounce it off the wall. But it, it's still it's still probably going to blind most people. They're probably going to be here. And it's such a tight, uh, tight reaction time window that they probably won't be turning from it, or if they turn from it, they'll be turning from it late. And then you can kind of just wait for it to immediately pop, and then get them in the back. Like this is how you still fraction people. This is how you still fraction the terrorists, and this is how you play coordinated CD setup. Um, but I mean, even if I wanted to take like something on cat, like even, say I wanted to take a. a Mid peak or like say we listen for it, we don't hear anybody coming B. Then I can come, I can come cat with my other teammate who's playing B. I can have him flash mid for me, like I don't know, something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit, flashback. a little bit shower. Yeah, something like that. And 
you know, I can have my face on the wall and peek that way. Instead of this way that my, my teammate at B can flash for me instead of the my teammates at A flashing for me. Uh but these are these are ways for the entry fraggers to uh, take advantage of their aggression and their ability to coordinate with their teammates, even on CT side. But that's what an entry fragger does, or at least what an entry fragger should be doing. This is this is what I've wanted for our team, and I'm kind of sad that we haven't gotten one yet. But uh, hopefully, I've demonstrated that I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to this position, and if I have to try and fill the role, like if some someone can fill the lurk role and I can do this, then uh, maybe this will we'll find a little bit more success with this. So, yeah, let me know what you think.